Hey, thanks for watching. This is the third and final installment of the Word of God study. Um, yes, it's happening. Um, okay, so let's go to Acts 17, verses 10 through 12. So it says, As soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. So we've looked at that scripture already, um, but it's again um, just a reminder that the heart that God wants, the heart that God values, is a heart that examines, you know, a heart that wants to see if all this is true, you know. Don't just take my word for it. Don't just take, like, your preacher's word for it. Examine the scriptures to see if this is actually God's will, you know, if this is what God is saying. For me, when I studied the Bible, I have an academic background um, in English, so I am trained as a reader. That's, like, my whole thing. And I also, I just, I started reading when I was four, and I just had my nose in a book the entire time I was growing up. So I'm an avid reader and um, just somebody who, like, I'm all about tone and uh, inflection, you know, like that kind of stuff. Like, so for me, when I was first studying the Bible and, you know, I was getting these different scriptures and I was like, okay, I see that, you know, but like, is that really what the Bible says? Is that really what the whole thing says? If you look at it in context and blah, 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 you know, and that's the thing is that um, what I found is that. It's not, the Bible does not resist that kind of reading. The Bible welcomes that kind of reading. It welcomes that kind of heart to be like, okay, I believe you. I hear what you're saying, but I'm going to find out for myself if that's true. Because <laughs> as I've continued to read, I've been like, oh, that is true. And not only is that true, but like you stated it, but even it's just like constant, you know, it's like once you see once you see, uh, once you see some of these things, once you see the way that you're asked to worship, it's just all through the Bible, you know. So I think for some, I think that the way that a lot of um, organized religion is set up right now, people don't come into contact with the Bible that much, or they come into contact with it if they're like very extra special religious, or they're you know some special class of Christian or something like that. But that's not what. The Bible is intended for it's intended for everyone and it's intended that everyone read it and understand it and develop their own convictions about it because the spiritual battle is not easy and you will get taken out of it like that if you don't have your own convictions about it so it's not about at the end of the day you do need to be um, with a body of people and that's a whole nother discussion about the church and whatever but you do need to be with a body of believers um, but at the same time you have to search it out for yourself and God values that God wants you to search it out for yourself you know so there's no you know it's not about somebody twisting the word to make it look like this or that it's about like if you actually read the word read it widely read it deeply then you'll be like Oh, that's very obvious, actually, that that's, um, that that's what it says. And it says it not just in one place, but throughout. <clears throat> a lot of the same themes are just, you know, are just throughout the Bible. Um, about faithfulness to God, about the way that you worship, about having to give up everything in order to, um, to worship correctly. So it's not supposed to be easy. It's not supposed to be comfortable even though it's very true that you will be blessed if you walk according to the law of the lord if you keep his statutes that's incredibly true you know you can be like i got three hours of sleep i worked from 7 a.m to 11 p.m i was doing this that and the other and i feel great i'm actually really happy you know so that's being blessed <laughs> by walking according to the law of the lord you know so it's not that it's going to be terrible or anything but it shouldn't be like a kind of comfortable christianity where you're like yeah, just, you know, the Lord's really awesome, um, but I, he doesn't really ask anything of me. You know, like, I get to decide, like, how I'm comfortable worshiping, what kind of church works for me, and whatever. What you need is the kind of church that works for God. <laughs> the kind of church that God approves of. The kind of church that encourages you and holds itself to the standard of holding to Jesus' teachings. So you would think that that would be easy to come across, because... 
there's a church on like literally almost every corner but you know like most other religions have like one or two different like divisions within them and Christianity has like 43,000 so one of our leaders was saying uh was saying this very well that he was like you know just imagine that if there is a truth if there is a satan you know like wouldn't you try to muddy that truth as much as possible wouldn't you try to like mess you know try to make it as difficult as possible to find that truth if you were satan who's like super mad at God and wants to take his people away from him. So I think that the fact that there's 43,000 denominations of Christianity means that, you know, they're onto something, you know, it's something that makes Satan angry and makes people, makes Satan lead people away into stuff like following traditions rather than following the word of God, you know, um, or just, you know, getting into weird corners where you hold on to one scripture, but there's 10 scriptures that say the opposite of that, you know. So, you know, we're weak creatures. We have to depend on God. But the only way that we really know God is to know him through his word. So, again, I would just encourage you to have the heart of a Berean, to really research things out for yourself, to really study the Bible, and really see what it has to say. Just give it a chance to see what it has to say. Um, so, yeah. Um, so that's Acts 17. And then let's take a look at James 1, verses 22 to 25. Back in the back here. Okay, James 1, verses 22 to 25. So it says, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word, but does not do what it says, is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror, and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom, and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So again, um, this is an injunction to not just kind of be like, yeah, that was a really beautiful passage, you know, but to put it into practice, you know. Again, the word is useful. It's for our lives. It's our roadmap. It's our guide to God, um, which is where we want to go, <laughs> you know. That's what God's heart is for us. Um, but yeah, and it says that we can be deceived when we just listen to the word and when we don't do it, you know. So again, like we're just, we're only human. Um, we can easily be deceived. And Satan is the father of lies, you know. He doesn't even, he doesn't believe in truth. He still believes that he can win the war against God, even though it's already done, you know. Um, so he doesn't really even, he doesn't respect the truth. What he does is lie, 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 lie. So his whole thing is deceit, you know, and that we can be deceived and deceive ourselves if we just listen to the word. It's no, it's okay with Satan if we hear the word, but if we put it into practice, that threatens him because that's actually a move towards God, you know? So, um, yeah, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. So that's like, you know, you wake up in the morning sometimes and your hair is all like cray, you know, and you're like, ooh, <laughs> we are needing some work here. So then you like do the work and you're like, okay, awesome, I'm ready to go, you know. Um, but if you just looked in the mirror and were like, you know, then you still go out looking a mess, you know, and you don't even realize you look like a mess because you've already forgotten what you saw. So the purpose for a mirror is not to, the purpose for a mirror is to correct you, you know, in the way that the Bible corrects you. So the Bible, it says, is a mirror. It's a way of seeing yourself, seeing what your heart looks like, you know, so that you can correct it, so that you can be with God. Um... And again, it says, but whoever looks intently, so there's again that Berean heart of looking intently, you know, searching it out, figuring it out. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So again, too, it says that this perfect law, the Bible, the perfect law that comes from God, not from man, the perfect law, what it does is it gives freedom, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It gives freedom, and again, you have to continue in it. It's not enough to have a one-time experience or whatever, you know. You continue in it, not forgetting what you've heard, but doing it. You continue it, you put it into practice, and then you'll be blessed in what you do. So it's actually like a pretty simple formula, 
But, you know, what it says about the Word of God is that it's sweet on the sweet in the mouth and bitter in the stomach. Um, it's easy to hear the Word. It's easy to be like, oh, that was very beautiful. And then when you go to put it into practice, you're like, oh, that's hard. I don't want to do that. <laughs> do I have to do that? Okay. But then once you do it, you will be blessed. So, yeah. Um, again, you have to kind of go after it. You know, God really prizes that heart. He rewards that. If you really, if you're not sure, you know, but if you go after reading the Bible and trying to figure out what it actually says, rather than just making judgments about what you think it says or what you don't like about it or why you wouldn't read it or whatever, if you actually go after it, get into it, then God rewards that, you know, and he rewards that heart that's hungry for knowledge. So, um, with the truth that sets you free. So that's a pretty good deal. Um, yeah, so, okay, so last scripture here. So let's go to John 12, uh, verse 48. And you notice that it says all scripture. It just says scripture. It's, so that's like, it doesn't say just the book of John or just <clears throat> the book of Numbers or just whatever. It says all scripture is God breathed. Scripture is useful for teaching, whatever. That's the whole Bible. That's not just the New Testament or just the Old Testament, which is the, the first five books are the Torah. It's not just, just the sections that work for you. It's the whole Bible. So all of the Bible is useful for teaching, um, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Um, so yeah, so John 12, 48. So it says, um, There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them at the last day. This is another scripture where you're like, eh, what's that? Um, so yeah, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ, but it says, There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them at the last day. So this gives the reason for why study the Bible, why investigate the Word of God, because um, it's going to judge us on the last day. At the end of our lives, it will judge us. Um, ultimately, this is the account to which we're called, because also Hebrews says, to the one uh, to whom we must give account. Right? So there is an account that's necessary, even though we kind of spend a lot of our lives trying to believe that there isn't, <laughs> you know, I mean, like, you know, it's fine, it's fine, whatever, you know, and like, just kind of in this state of like, avoiding the truth. But God says that no matter what you think about it, this is actually what you will be judged by on the last day. So it's like if you were taking like an astrophysics class or something, and you never went to the lectures, and you never did the homework, and then you showed up on the last day to take the final, are you going to pass that final? No, you're totally not, you know. Um, so it doesn't change the final. The fact that you didn't do the work doesn't, you know, the fact that you didn't learn what, what was presented to you to learn doesn't change the fact that there is a final, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's controversial, but that's what the Bible says. So it says that we're going to be judged by this, at, you know, <laughs> Um, at the last day, but you know, the fact is that it's an open book final. So if you went to that class, if you did the work, then you have a much better chance of passing than if you, you know, just don't like it's, it's coming one way or the other, but, um, this is the way in which we can actually, um, be pleasing in God's eyes. Otherwise, how do we know what's pleasing in God's eyes? The whole thing about the Bible from the perspective of someone who came as like essentially an unbeliever, you know, um, is that there's nothing in it that I could have made up <laughs> on my own. Nothing in it is what I would have guessed um, to be the path to salvation. Nothing in it is what I would have been like, oh, yeah, that's what I think Jesus is like. Even though I went to a church, you know, a church that I really liked, you know, with great people in it, you know. Um, but even though I went to a church and whatever, like, I really was not a Christian. Like, I was a Christian by tradition, um, but I didn't have any convictions of my own. I had never really read the Bible. And when I did go to read it, I was like, 
this is shocking to me. This is not what I thought was in here. So yeah, I would encourage you again to have the heart of a Berean and just go after it and really just find out what is in the Bible, you know, uh, and to read widely. I think it's good to start with these scriptures that I'm sharing. You can read kind of like above and below them so you get more of the context and are like, oh, okay, that's how that works there, you know. So that's a starting place, but you can really, you know, read whatever works for you, but just make sure that you go after it, you know, and I think you'll begin to see these themes come up again and again. So, um, yeah, I hope that's helpful, and um, thanks again for watching, thanks for your time, and I will see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.